Starlight Glimmer was thinking about Trixie Lila Moon again. Trixie was a dumb blue horse with bad manners and big, sparkly, intoxicating purple eyes. Starlight was a bad pony, and Ponyville was a town where nothing bad ever seemed to happen. Trixie Lila Moon was never nice to Starlight Glimmer, and she hated her purple eyes and big teeth. Trixie would always eat up the whole of any hay they gave her for lunch, or go through their trail mix and pick out all of the M&Ms. It didn't seem to matter how many letters they wrote to the princess, or how many monsters they defeated in battle. It was like if Trixie Lila Moon wanted something bad enough, it happened. She wants to be a pony. Thought Starlight Glimmer with a shiver. A pony is a horse who lives in a town. But you can only let a horse to town. You cannot take the horse out of the pony. You know that there are other animals, right? Thought Starlight Glimmer. The world wasn't just horses and ponies. There were more kinds than those two. They might not all lie together, but they all lived somewhere. She reasoned that of course this was was the case. She was extraordinarily drunk. The door to the last chance pony bar opened like itty sticky crumbs from a unicorn sleepy eyes. A Starlight Glimmer? Asked some pony or other. Starlight Glimmer managed to get herself upright on her saddle horn. I'm sorry, she slurred like a sleepy sailor. Do I know you? We're going to be working together at Sweet Apple Acres. Starlight looked up into this person's smile. It was a good smile. A great smile. Are you a girl? Starlight said. Or a boy? There is no time, they replied. Put on this helmet. The fate of the world itself may hang in the balance. At the farm, the sky was darkening with nightfall. They don't even know me, thought Starlight Glimmer as various ponies toted canisters into the works it. Someone was fastening Starlight into a sort of supplied surface diving suit apparatus. Well, she was as ready as she would ever be. It could be worse. Starlight thought of one thing. Trixie Lila Moon. She imagined her purple eyes boring through the helmet's protective glass. She wondered how much the suit was actually protecting her from the things she feared most, which at the moment were neither extreme fluid pressure nor hypothermia. But these dumb thoughts would have to wait for another time. There was a perilous alternate dimension to penetrate. You'll see some real magic today, promised Sparkle Moon. She pulled the gauntlets from the refrigerator. So put this on, she commanded. Starlight did so, wrapping the gloves around her pony hands before entering the regulation chamber. The supporting beams began to oscillate like itty sticky crickets, vibrating until they were in perfect unison. The powerful humming noise of the machine overwhelmed Starlight Glimmer's senses. Her vision was magnified to near human level by the pulsing lights that lined her peripheral vision. Then, the chamber went dark and the aperture ground open dimensional space. The purple pony rolled onto her back and extended both hoops towards the outermost light tunnel. She stretched out and drifted slowly through it. The world beyond was different than anything a good pony had ever seen. It occurred to her that if she would need to describe to others later she would probably have difficulty putting it in concrete terms. Sort of like if you tell someone that they're really beautiful, but you also have other, contrasting opinions about them at the same time, like it is sticky something or other. So, instead, Starlight focused on being totally immersed in this phenomenon. Someone was speaking into her headset. The world outside the portal is a similar one to your own home planet, but with few distinctive characteristics. There are many crowds of peoples, who may seem strange and alien to you. Starlight began to realize that if there was a big difference between this world and hers, it was that people were not like they were on her world. They seemed to be some sort of animate vegetable beings. There are no princesses here, thought Starlight. What am I supposed to do? She had never been in this situation before, and it was frightening. The mere possibility of failure was terrifying. It was sort of like if a little tiny boy was to suddenly be faced with a huge, scary monster. He might freeze up, or scream, or even run away screaming, or try and hide. However, her mission was clear. To find Trixie Lila Moon recover her to the extraction point, who knew what these alien vegetable beings were capable of? Hey, came a voice over the radio. You're the only one who can help me. It was the blue unicorn pony. Trixie. Are you there? Starlight called out, and immediately, the blue horse's words echoed inside her helmet. Over here. She heard Trixie Lila Moon's footsteps, coming closer. Are you okay? Starlight's heart raced like a racehorse at the starting gate. Can you get me out of here? Asked the purple pony. 
I can try, replied Starlight. Describe your surroundings. It's an enormous crowd of plants. They look kind of like cabbages. Cabbage people. They're extremely dangerous. Trixie, said Starlight, I need to find you so I can recover you to the extraction point. But they will eat you. Cried Trixie. Don't worry, Trixie, said Starlight. I'm a powerful sorcerer, and I'm armed to the teeth. Oh, said Trixie. That's good to know. Do you have any food? Yes. I've got lots of trail mix. But that won't last long. By this point Starlight had found Trixie. She was being surrounded by powerful cabbage beings. Starlight had no choice but to open fire. She destroyed them. Pieces of vegetables scattered in the wind like flowers after a tornado. But there were still more of them. Starlight opened up again. She could hear the sound of crunching, like dry leaves, as the vegetables disintegrated. She was running out of ammunition, but they kept. She spun around, firing wildly into the crowd of plant creatures and seeing sparks and pieces fly everywhere. This caused more destruction among the cabbages, but for the first time Starlight didn't feel afraid of anything. Get to the portal. Shouted Starlight. I'll hold them off. No, said Trixie. They're too strong. You can't take them all on. I know, Trixie. Starlight raised her left hoof and unleashed a bolt of magical energy. It smashed through the side wall of the massive crowd of anthropomorphic plant life. Trixie dashed towards the portal. Starlight's eyes were burning. She was bleeding, and her suit was getting more and more shredded, but she wouldn't let herself be deterred. She tried to follow Trixie. The blue horse was disappearing through the opening, and then it was just a dark hole. Starlight continued onward, trying to run, but her feet fell heavily against the ground with each step, making it almost impossible to move forward. But Starlight Glimmer was determined to make it to the other side. She was sure that there were more than enough carrots, hay, and sweet apples waiting for her. This is it, said Starlight. Now it's up to me. Starlight woke with a start. She sat upright in bed. She could hear the rain. Good morning, sleepyhead. Trixie said. You slept all day. Did you bring me back? Asked Starlight Glimmer. You weren't in very good shape when you arrived, explained Trixie. I had to use mouth to mouth. You saved my life. You know, said Trixie, the whole time we were in that strange place together, it occurred to me that you were the first pony that has ever rescued me. You're so brave and strong. Starlight stuttered. You know, Trixie, actually, there's something else I need to talk to you about. I need to tell you something. What's wrong? Asked Trixie. Starlight said it's sort of like if you tell someone that they're really beautiful, but you also have other, contrasting opinions about them at the same time, like itty sticky something or other. So instead, you focus on immersing yourself in the phenomenon. Let's get married, said Trixie. Starlight closed her dumb purple eyes. You know Trixie, I don't think I can get married right now. Why not? Because I'm a clone. Clone? Said Trixie. What do you mean? Well, remember that time you were attacked by those monsters? The ones who ate me? Starlight shook her head and swallowed hard. Well, that wasn't me. That was the real Starlight Glimmer, the original. She's gone. I thought I could be me forever. It was just like a dream. But then I met you, and I realized that I was never going to be me. I'm sorry, Trixie. Trixie leaned her head on Starlight Glimmer's shoulder and held her tightly. Beyond the window, the ruins of Pomeva could be seen, haunted with the shambling silhouettes of vegetable monsters. The rain hammered like Paris brides, 